Okay, now I'm recording. So, Prismacolor sketches on marker pad. And the focus today is going to be power tools and an angle grinder. Just so I can keep it all focused. You know, maybe, maybe sometimes I get distracted and, and perhaps I, uh, you know, think of a drill idea. You know, sometimes these tools can work together in a family. They should work together in a design family. So like, let's say they're all craftsmen or uh, what's another, Makita. And so all of these tools will have a family look, maybe color scheme, maybe the graphics, but you know, I'll address that as we go along. So I'm gonna share my screen. Somebody just came in, so let me just make sure that we're all good. So I don't, so I put everyone cool. Um, so somebody just came in, I don't know who it is, but um, Shanta. Okay, no Shanta. That one's missing, and Eli, no Eli either. Okay, no Eli, and Tomoya. Tomoya, hey Tomoya. Hi, hi. Okay. Hey, hey, and um, Daniela? I know Daniela. Okay, we're good then. Great. I'm gonna share, firstly, before I share my screen. I'm going to get my camera all hooked up here. It's already hooked up. But this is a weird thing. This is this camera's pretty good, but it's also got some bugs. You know, some it's, it's cheap, but it's a good one. It's actually better than the CCS ones that they have in house. Uh, okay, I'm going to start turning on my software. I'll start screen share. Well, before I do that, I'll turn on my Visualizer, so I get the software. Okay, great. And I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to start off with the desktop. Okay, so you see my desktop now. Let's move that out of the way. Leave it there so in case somebody comes in. Okay. Just find a sketch. So I'm doing that type of stuff. Let's just get it all focused. Lock that down and I'll lock down all that white balance stuff that's already locked. Okay, great. So as per usual, if, if the colors start going weird because clouds go over or whatever, um, and it starts to, you can't really see what I'm doing, just shout out because I'm not always looking at the screen. So, okay, got the marker pad. And let's start doing some angle grinders. I know what an angle grinder looks like, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, uh, I'm just gonna pull up some images just for reference because I haven't looked at them much. So I'm just gonna pull up an extra window here and just have a little overview. I guess you could consider this very superficial research. But I just wanna type in angle grinder, just see what's out there. Yep, okay. And it's gonna also give me insights into some nice views as well. Oh, I don't want products, I want images. So this seems to be the predominant type of view. The handle is not 90 degrees, so it's held, and it looks like it's at an angle for most of these. Well, this Derwent, Derwalt, Derwalt is uh, straight. This one's straight. Oh, this has got a nice look like that that's kind of cool it's like an aircraft or some sort of um yeah that's cool all right i got it 
I'm going to be influenced by that. This is reminding me of trains, uh, perhaps aircraft, jumbo jets, uh, cruise ships, but definitely some transporty inspiration from that. But I prefer that to something like this. This is, this is brutal. I, I wouldn't go brutal. Just finding some inspirations. This one's cool. This is, reminds me of snowmobiles somehow. Just looking around. This one's super boring. I'm not going boring. All right, cool. I got an overview. Awesome. And then we'll just keep that off to the side just in case. Did anyone just come in just now? All right, I don't need to do attendance. I, I just came in. Oh, who's, who, uh, oh. Shanta. Shanta, okay, I'll get you in here. 15 minutes late, uh, okay. Okay, Shanta. Okay, cool. All right, so Shanta, since you missed, I'm doing a Prisma color drawing on a marker paper and I'm doing power tools. I'm doing angle grinders. So I'm not, I already did some, a little bit of superficial research. And now that I'm all ready to roll, I'm gonna actually share my uh, directly software so it should be better image quality for you. So I'm gonna share that software page visualizer, share. Okay, as a little introduction, I'm gonna tell you a little tip about these things. Now, Prisma colors, you know, love hate thing with them, but pencil sharpener matters on this stuff. So a lot of you might have a very simple pencil sharpener like this, you know, a manual one. Now, the problem with the Prisma colors in these manual ones, this is a very good manual pencil sharpener, sharp as anything. And, but the thing is, when you, when you, you it's, it's, so I'm gonna just choose a pencil that's kind of, so each time you sharpen it, by the way, I use the sharp one. So there's, there's two, two, two circles, you know, this is for very stubby type of point, And this one in here is much more sharper, but this one also creates a lot more friction. Um, and so therefore the potential of using this manual pencil sharpener has the potential to ruin your pencil. And what I mean by that is, and in fact, I'm gonna angle my camera down so you can see me sketching at the same time. So let's just angle my camera down. Okay, there we go. So you can see me sketching. So what happens is you, you, you stick it in this, uh, the smaller one and you, each time you rotate it, you potentially break it. The lead breaks. You know how annoying, that's already freaking broken. And now the lead's stuck in there. So then I gotta pull this apart, get a knife, get that chunk of lead out, pull that out. And, and so it's really, this is just the part of the nightmare that is this situation. And then, but I'm telling you about this for more than the reason of try not to use these things. The second best thing is an electric, battery powered electric one. This is a very good one, it's exact, exacto. So exacto knives make really good blades. The blade in this thing's super sharp, it's great. Um, but this is my, second favorite thing um, because this also sometimes chews up your pencil now the reason why it chews up your pencil is because inside the wood inside let's call it lead i don't know what the material is that makes the um, makes this makes the marks but what happens is it breaks so internally it'll crack this 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 lead will crack inside and that happens from Forcing, forcing, you know, forcing the, the pencil sharpener, even this thing does it. Um, and so if you have a dull blade in there, it's gonna crack the lead all the way down here um, because the, the, torsional, the torsional force of, it just, it just twists, twists that lead inside and it just breaks. Each time you go, you, you um, sharpen it more and more, it breaks again, breaks again, breaks again. And by the end of the, uh, the session, you've ruined your pencil, you haven't got anything out of it, and it's all ruined. So that's why I really don't like these. It just wastes money and wastes time and you just get angry. Uh, so, but there's a way to fix this. If you start coming across a situation where you're sharpening it and it keeps breaking 
you can stick it in the microwave because what happens is this lead melts. So if you put heat to it, it melts. And if you stick it, stick your pencil in the microwave, two seconds, three seconds max. If you go above three seconds, it catches on fire. Um, but what happens if you stick it in the microwave, it kind of melts it all back together and bonds it back. If you're lucky, it, it does that. But quite often it saves your pencil. But I tell you, there's this metal writing on the pencil and uh, it starts sparking in, in the microwave and it causes a fire. So you really have to watch it. Two seconds max, three seconds absolute max. Any more, I've caught my stuff on fire. It'll, it'll start sparking somewhere and it'll just spark a hole, a hole in there all the way to the lead um, and then your pencil's ruined and it causes a fire. So my favorite thing is I have an industrial, um, I got the best pencil sharpener I could when I first started doing my master's course um, at CCS. I got it because I knew, I knew I would be needing this. Oh no, I didn't, I got this way before that. I had this one job working for Hot Wheels where I was doing their style guide. Every year they do a sketching style guide. So they asked me to do a style guide one year and they say, all right, Brooke, we want to see some style guide for Prisma colors, um, some ballpoint pen and some Sharpie, some mainstream materials. What they do with the style guide is they hand this to the designers. Um, and it's a really nice formal book. It's a spiral bound printed, really no expense spared uh, document. And it has all of these styles of sketching that they want their designers to do. So one of the criteria was to draw with Prismacolor. And also Astro Studios where I was working, a lot of people use the Prismacolors I also followed suit and I did it. And I finally learned to go ballpoint pen, but nonetheless, I got this industrial pencil sharpener and it's right here. It's right, it's, you can see it. I, I know that, okay, so here, is, here it is. It's got my little stickers on there. And so um, this thing was about like 80 bucks. It's heavy and what it's designed for is this designed for classrooms. So all the students, all the kids, go up there and sharpen their pencils or whatever. So it's super industrial. It's lasted me like 15 years at least, and it's hardcore and it does not mess up your pencil. It just grinds, it just grinds it. It's smooth, sharp, and, um, and it just sharpens real nice. So if you have the luxury to get a, if you're really into Prisma colors, I would definitely invest in one of these things because it's gonna save your pencils and your time. And you're gonna hear it roaring away as I sketch. Okay, that's my little rant about Prismas. Well, let's get started. You can get some real nice flavors from these things. I'm using indigo blue, which is the classic. Black is also good, but you know any color works as long as it's darker. Browns, reds. Reds is a little obnoxious. Angle grinders, so let's start off this process. So I'm starting angle grinders for the first time. I've actually never drawn one before but I understand the concept of it. So I'm just gonna start off with some simple thumbnails, get into the flow, then, then, um, then I'm gonna be able to get into larger drawings. But I just gotta get into the flow first. I'm already flowing as far as sketching because I was sketching just a few minutes ago for about three hours. So let me just get the basics of the angle grinder. Uh, um, so, uh, so this is like motor area. I want that fast look, so that's why I'm so let's say the motor's in the motor. So it comes down, the grinder comes down here, you know, just mentally figuring out how this thing works. So this is that grinder part. Um, here's my axle for the, the motor. Then I line up my motor in here. It's probably a big beefy motor. I'd want a big beefy motor personally. Um, so there's my motor. And then, so there's a handle that comes out. Make it a little ergonomic. Actually, the motor probably goes through here. I gotta look, I gotta look. Um, I've gotta look at this thing to see. I'm gonna stay with the, the norms, but let me just have a look, because the, those handles right here are so thick that I, it makes me think that maybe there is a, a motor in there instead of here, and that has a direct effect on how I'm gonna design it. So let's go to this angle grinder. Look how thick this thing is. So it must be, uh, can you see my, you can't see my screen, can you? Okay, well basically I don't need to show you my screen. I can see it myself and that's all that really matters. But I see that the handles back here are super massive. So that makes me think that actually the motor is probably in here. 
probably big motor, comes down and there's a gearbox in here and then it goes down. So that's gonna give me more freedom to, to <clears throat> stylize all this up here, big motor in here, and I guess batteries and everything. We'll just put a cord on this one. But if I wanted a battery pack, let me just type in, I know you can't see my search, but it's fine. Let me type in battery powered, angle grinder, battery powered. Let me just see, because I might do that instead. It's more modern. Battery angle grinder. Okay, I s All right, yep, I see. So what's happening? This is my superficial research, and this is what you all would do as well. So motor in here, big motor. There, gearbox down to the angle grinder, and then big ass battery. Down here we want a nice big battery, and then some fancy schmancy up here, and then here's the angle grinder. Okay, so that looks more like a proportion, and then there's a big handle on the side. Yep, okay, got it. Okay, that was just a little warm up. Okay, angle grinders. I like to start off with a simple side view, uh, just to you know get start getting some flavors. So I want something. I don't know. Let's just start off with some very basic shapes. But I could never hold that, so I'm gonna make it a little thinner. And this is also gonna be hard to hold, but. Let's just see if I can do a little extra styling. So now I can wrap my fingers around this thing. Uh, let's just follow on this line. You know, you want some nice clean look, um, but it's still too high. I've never put my hand around that. Considering this is like the disc drive shaft. Um, and I know the grinder is probably about that big around it's probably around about that big so you know I get the uh, ratio that but how, how my hand can grip this comfortably so you know I'm gonna try to have to make so this is how wide the grinder is but then my hand can only handle half that so I need to make that a little thinner so I'm gonna go make that a little thinner so there we go Hand hand fits in here And, and I want to, I beef it up in the back for, um, for the battery. Just make sure all my, my things are lined up just so I can create, you know, just so it looks good. You know, you've got to have this construction lines to, uh, you know, make sure it's all straight. Otherwise it's going to look weird. This is all a mistake. So I'm going to just, Lately, you can't erase these pencils. So when I make a big mistake like this, I make a deliberate, deliberate mark through it because otherwise it's gonna confuse me and I'll start rendering it in and I'll realize it doesn't work. So anyway, continuing on, let's just get some nice smooth styling going. So the form language is this, and it's nothing adventurous, but um, let's start getting in some other form language. These shapes are dancing together. I mean, it's not, as I say, it's not the most adventurous, but it's the start. So start rounding off some of the corners. This is the battery area. I need a good mounting point for that battery. You know, because there's parts that come in and whatever. Okay. Um, so there, uh, so I'm getting some styling going on here. And this, I'll straighten that up. Okay, so I've got a first draft. These are not thumbnails, <laughs> as you can tell. But it just so happens that I happen to draw the size, so I'm gonna continue and see what happens. If I were to do thumbnails, I would probably get onto the Sharpie. But let's just get this first draft done. Okay, rounding off all the corners, there's some so I'm going to make this rubber grip. So a little following my form language. I'm gonna have a rubber grip around here. 
and then just finish off neatly following the battery pack stuff. And maybe I put in some finger holes. There's gonna be four. So I'll just go light one, two, three. I think it would be four. So just lightly put that in and just put it, at least I mapped it out. I mapped out where the finger hole, where the finger indentions are. So I know this is gonna be under, so I'm gonna make those darker. Round it off. Okay. Round off these corners. Um, okay, the styling goes down. So I've got some consistent lines going. And so let's see. Okay, I'm going to put some vents. I'm sure there's some vents in here. So I'm going to just start putting these in just roughly. My pencil is very dull right now, but it's okay for this looseness. There, keeping consistent with and, and uh, neat. I'm just following my lines, but closing off these vents. And now I put some shadows into those vents. And now I can start doing some basic shading. And this is just, as I say, this is just a warm up. I have this form language. I'm gonna continue that in here. So it's going to be, um, and then another one here. I don't know, it's just some lines. So let me just start doing some shading, some basic shading. Um, all of this bottom styling part, I'll just shade that in. And then continue my angle of attack on the shading. Um, there's that. And also, I'm gonna just do the same down here. I stop it here because it's gonna to have to have some sort of styling detail in there. Okay, so I've got the bottom shaded in. I'll make this a little bit darker in here. And I'll make something super dark in here. And since, since I'm angled, <laughs> pardon me saying angled because of, but this form language does not match this, so I'm gonna match that up. So it's, it's angled and not roundy. Maybe I have to shade that in, I'm not sure. Okay, and then there's a big uh, handle, side handle. So you hold it and side handle. And I'm just gonna rough that in, probably a little not exactly center, I think it does gotta be center. So let me just try to figure out where this pivot's gonna be. And basically I'm basing it off the, uh, where, where the drive shaft is for the, the, the grinder part. So I'm gonna make it mount in here. This is gonna be the handle. So that's gonna be basically be my handle. I'm gonna go underneath there hard. Um, and here hard, I'm going to just shade that in, I'm going to shade, just make sure there's a shadow. This is all about the line weight stuff. Just try again, I'll just run here and I'm going to shade this up too. So I'm going to start darkest at the bottom because that's the most shaded. And as I go up, I'm going to fade it, fade it up because the light is coming from above, I'm assuming. So there's my handle. I'm gonna drop in a shadow of that handle down in here. Just saying the light is really directly above. Now this is gonna be super dark. My pencil's very dull right now, but it's cool. Cause I'm just doing rough. So that's a shadow. Um, there's gonna be a shadow here as well because this is the shape of the handle. So this is gonna cast a shadow down here. So that's what this is down here, so I'm gonna shade that. It's just all about giving it depth. Um, next, I'm gonna shade in this, this grip. This is some rubber grip and I'm just gonna go over that just one more time, just to differentiate the colors. And I'm gonna add some extra heft 
to those fingers, uh, some extra indentations for those finger grooves. And I'll shade those in a little bit darker. I'll go up and down this time, but it's just to get some idea of some surfacing, functional surfacing. One good thing about power tools is um, it's very functional and I really like functional stuff as opposed to fake stuff. So I don't know what to do right now. So I'm just gonna continue this line. I'm, I'm just gonna do some lines and this just Keep that form language. It's gonna bend down here. So, okay. Next layer is, I'm gonna be careful not to shade into that circle and I'm gonna go light here and I'm gonna go over the whole lot because I'm adding extra layers to that whole lot but also giving it a little bit of volume Here, so I'm going to shade all that in. Okay, uh, let's just put in all this stuff. This this is not styled. This is functional stuff. So I don't know need to get hardcore onto that. But I guess you could. I guess you could put in some styling in there, like some rims. I don't. I don't really know. Maybe it's something innovative. Not sure. Okay, angle grinder in. Sharpening the pencil because it's dull as dull as anything. Is this sharp or not? Let me just there. Uh, just gonna lock this down. Okay. Um, so maybe this is okay for a first concept. I mean, it's not really, but it's a first sketch, and might as well make it look a little bit nice in case I get desperate and I have to show it to my boss. So I'm gonna just drop a shadow in there. And all I'm doing is copying the, this shape. All I'm doing is just copying that shape, but just shifting it off to the side. Hey, sh give me a shout out if you if if you need some if you don't understand something. Okay, simple drop shadow. Round off the corners, and this I'm just going to shade in. I'm going to sharpen the sky again. I'm going to get dark in here. I'm gonna make it dark, but I'm gonna have to sharpen a lot at this point. Start getting in some little bit more details about the surround, uh, the silhouette, because I'm gonna be shading it in in the shadow. So there's that, this. Let's just say there's a little groove in there for material separation. Keeping with my angular look. Okay, um, now I'm gonna shade this in. I'm gonna shade it in opposite. I feel like the light is there over here. The light is over here because just by default, I've shifted the shadow this way so the light is gonna be somehow over here. So all of my surfaces are gonna be darker on the shadow side. So let's just fill that in. It's gonna be darker here, but I wanna get into the shadow. Oh, I should have made my shadow come down. <sighs> okay, whatever. Let's um, fill this in. I'm gonna start over here and I'm gonna go light. And then as I go back, it's gonna get darker because it's getting darker because it's deeper in the shadow. Now I'm going quite hard. Now I'm going hard, hard, hard. Light up here because the light is up, but as I get deeper into the shadow, it gets dark. And just to add a little extra punch, I'm gonna just punch this out one more time and just bring that darkness in so we get some nice contrast. Finished, and now I'm gonna do this other side down here. I mean, the up, I'm gonna go up. I guess one good thing about these pencils is you can really bust out sketches quick. 
Um, okay, so I've got a basic concept here, but I'm gonna get into thumbnails, but I am gonna put a box, some background, and what this is gonna be, this is gonna be my light source. So I'll show you what I mean. That square box is gonna be my light source. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna shade it up inside the box and get lighter as I go up because inside, inside of the box is the light source. And I'll fade that up. So it helps to reiterate the fact that the light is coming down this way. And I did screw up with this part, but. Okay. Um, let's put in some, some vents. Uh, let's, I've got this form language. Oh. Um, and you know what, let me just shade that off. Okay, so that's one, but not great. But let me, let me try to draw three-dimensionally. You've already started here with this, this uh, handle. Uh, so I've got this piece, kind of goes like this. And then it goes, oh man, it goes up like, Just takes a lot of experimenting to just get it right. A lot of wrong lines. So that's the Should it, I screwed up. All right, so I'm gonna move on. That was a warm up. Let's try to do some other thumbnails. Uh, that's not a thumbnail, but that's a warm up. So let me just try some basic shapes because I like the German styling. And let's put a head on there. Let's try some other things. Well, I've run out of paper, so sometimes that makes you have innovative ideas. And there's a battery pack back here. Maybe the, no, it's good enough. There, and then the angle grinder comes down there, there. Uh, maybe there's a switch down here. And maybe I could try to be innovative somehow and put a switch. For, the, for your forefinger in there. Um, and then also, this is where my fingers go. One, two, three. Four, wait, one, two, three, four. No, that's one. All I need is three because my forefinger is the trigger. So you know, think about this stuff as you're going. So three big fingers and one for the, okay, sharpen my pencil, get in there a little bit more. Do some very simple, this is like really basic, simple styling. I'm not going complex curves, I'm just going simple. Okay, it needs an end cap for the battery. Okay, and those are, I don't want to make them so pronounced, so I'm going to just make them more mellow. And then it goes in here. And just kind of join this stuff up. See, the lines of the product have to dance together, as I've mentioned before. So you try to make it, you know, somehow cohesive as a design, otherwise it's ugly. Um, so drive shaft. Maybe, I don't know. I'll try to get into something a little bit more funky, but this is not a very funky machine. What, what would be cool, now I think about it, is if the battery pack could screw on, like a light bulb, maybe, I don't know. So I'm gonna shade in all the bottom surfaces. Uh, let's make it a little bit stylish. 
following the form language. I shaded all of that. It's going to be red. I'm going to pull out a red. Well, what complements blue is orange. So I'm going to try to find an orange pencil. This one's obnoxiously orange. Too orange. You won't even see it. Brand new pencil. Oh, it's not even a, it's not even a, here's my color. I'm not using those cheap pencils. Those are horrible. Here. Blick. Blick self-brand. I don't know if it's any good. It's not bad. I'll use it. It might not work so well in here, but at least I can get some styling with some other color. Okay. And let's get in there with a little bit more styling stuff. A little bit more love into the fingers. And I'll shade that in a little bit more. Just shade all that in. I don't know what it is exactly yet. Rubber. I put some white paint on this. I'll put on some white paint to pop this off. In the meantime, the light is coming from this time. I'm going to try to be wary of the light before I start shading hardcore. There's my handle. So I'm going to say the light is over here somewhere. This time I can put in my shadows correctly. The shadow is going to come from that light down here because that, I'm going to start shading this in. And all underneath is super dark. Just these sides. That side's brighter, this side's darker. Underneath is definitely hardcore. That side's not so hardcore because there's a little bit of light coming. <clears throat> uh, back here is definitely going to be hardcore because that's the light stuff. Shadow, okay, underneath the handle. Shade that in. Darkest near the handle, and as it goes out, it's going to get lighter. You know, shading, you should try to shade um, with some dynamic gradients. I mean, it's not like super dynamic, but something, because it just adds power. Um, okay, so I might have a circle template. That's too small. Now I've got a big one in here somewhere. There we go. Oh, by the way, this stuff's cool. This is one time I can show you this stuff. Because I'm using pencil, and this only works with pencil. So I'll show you something cool with that. All right. Circle templates, big boys. Let's just go in there tight, because this always makes it, things look 100% better. There's that one. Um, I need a smaller one. And I didn't make it perfectly center, but it'll be fine. I'll line it up. Okay, so now I've got, uh, you know, I can start getting all rulery as well, using rulers. But so light's coming from here, so I'm going to start dark here, going over that shadow. And Make it lighter as it goes up because the handle is going to be slightly a little bit kind of bowed. Um, and I will yeah. I'll just put some bolts in there. 
I'll just put four. I don't know if there are any, probably not, but it might be a superficial styling. It looks tough. Um, shade all this side, of course, because it's all in shadow. But I've got the styling, so this, this is going to be a little bit darker down here. Okay, and so if I'm using circle templates, I might as well use the straight edges. Better get sharp. That one, keeping my lines nice and parallel by using the straight edge. There's the second one. Oh, this pencil is breaking up. <sighs> That's good enough. Oh man, it messed me up a little, but whatever. It's just a sketch, quickie. So keeping everything lined up. I might as well just bust these in. Keep on following it, just straighten all this stuff up. Not too heavy on that one. And finally, on the top of this, and the top of this. That's my cat. Might as well make this straight. And then here's this. Now what's cool is, I think I'm gonna shade it from the bottom up. But what I was gonna say, what's cool is, if you leave empty spaces like this, I'm hardly gonna shade it in, but it just looks cool because the white background blends into the, um, the drawing. And so it's, that's always a cool effect. It's a general design thing. You see it in graphic design and everywhere where the background blends in and it just looks reflective and, and, and basically cool. Start shading in this bottom part. And then I will start doing the same. Maybe this is darker. I don't know, maybe there's a surface in there. I'll just shade all that. And do a nice little outline. And this, in this case, the light's coming from here, so I will do another box. No, I'm gonna just just do that same shadow because it's the quickest and easiest, and it's effective. And I'll keep that straight because the shadow you wouldn't see those fingers in the shadow. My cat is so spoiled. He's asking for food, but I fed him already. But my wife's gonna feed him. Okay, I'll just shade all that in with some simple horizontal uh, vertical lines, starting darkest here because this is the deep, deepest part of the shadow. Fade up and I'll just continue that same stroke angle. And as I get forward closer to the light source, I'm going to fade it off. Um, I'm gonna, I feel like it needs some details in inside this uh, handle grip thing. So I just will put that in there. Maybe it adds grip or I don't know, maybe it just looks tough. Okay, so that's one thummy. Let's try something three dimensional now. Start off with a basic geometric shape. Get a little perspective grid going, super light, because you don't want that to mess up your drawing. Um, needs to be longer. So this is the head. So how am I gonna do this? I'm gonna I'm gonna put in, I liked those styling cues that were going on before, like aircraft. So I'm gonna start sculpting in some shapes. Honestly, I don't know what I'm doing yet. So it'll, we'll see what happens. Um, okay, this is gonna, so I'm gonna make that flat and then I'm gonna come down and Go here. Let's just see. 
Let's just get some perspectives going this way. This is the top. Let's just get some contour lines. It's starting to look like a train. Um, there, and then it's gonna have to dive in because my hand's gotta fit around this, this thing. Get the perspective right. So this is the body, the, the shaft thing where the motor is. I feel like this head needs to be bigger, so I'm gonna pop it out. And you'll be able to see it more clearly here. It's gonna come out. Seems to be a little bit wider, I think. So that's where I'm at at the moment. It still looks like way too much girth. I'm gonna have to reduce that down. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna need a place for my handle. So I'm gonna do an asymmetrical move. I'm gonna go here and, and kick it out here. Bring us down, kick that angle down here. Make sure it's all in perspective. Okay. I made that bigger and it's gonna have to be longer here. And so inside here is where I can start putting in an ellipse. An ellipse in here, using my perspectives, I'm using all that perspective in here is gonna be, and then there's a, like a bicycle handle or bicycle grip. The thing comes out here and it's gonna be down here. Just get this a little bit stronger. And then it goes inside the ellipse. It's a shaft, it's an, a cylinder on top of a disc. So it's just all worked on the same. Okay, there's that, that, and this thing's just so massive, but let me see if I can work with it. This is a battery part. So it's gonna be quite wide back here. And keeping all with the perspective, I'm gonna keep all my styling lines going back in the same direction. You know, keeping everything parallel, keeping that in perspective. And then I think I don't know how this works, hold up. That's my battery, and I'm just gonna leave that nice and empty. Okay, got this. I'm gonna start filling in the gaps. This is gonna be a definitely a big material separation. And take that over. You won't see it behind that head, if you wanna call it a head. And this is it's too massive. I can tell it's too massive. So I'm just gonna just cut off that bottom part. Hopefully, it's the first 3D sketch of this thing. So just warming up. I don't need this. Definitely a material separation in here. Kind of looks like a spaceship. Okay. Now, so massive, but maybe I can do something about it, like cutting out a place for my fingers. Actually, I wanna move, I wanna get away from the disc. There's a disc that's coming down here. There's a shaft there. And finally a circle. So this is lucky. I'm getting layers of stuff. So layers of stuff, this is the fourth, this is the first thing on the layer. Um, this is the second thing on the layer. All these layers are showing depth. Here's the metal body of the head. And it goes underneath that little handle thingy, that grip thing. And then the next layer is 
the actual grinder part. And then here, running out of paper, but it'll be fine because I don't see that underneath there. Okay, so. I don't know what that is, but anyway. So I was, I was, I was, so how when you're design thinking, you're thinking, well, this, this grinder is really dangerous. I mean, seriously dangerous. I've seen, I haven't, I've heard stories because that thing gets, it, 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 if you use a dull blade or a dull disc, it can grab something and literally pull it out of your hand and comes back on you if it's on a cord and it'll rip your skin off and just really can mess you up. So I don't want my fingers too close to that disc. So that's why I was shifting my fingers, finger holes or finger grip, whatever you want to call it, back here. Because when I started doing it, I was like, okay, well, if I'm having to do that, I better draw on the disc. <coughs> so the whole process of sketching is you're designing it on um, as you go. And you're figuring stuff out as you go. So, you know, that's that's really key. Anyway, let's start adding some grips. I gotta rip this off because I don't want to keep rotating my whole pad of paper. I'll start putting in some grips in here. Those are grips. My circle wasn't perfect. And um, like I've done here, I'll put in some little grooves. I start off on the quarters, and then I get into the eighths. That's not technical jargon, by the way. <laughs> That's just um, how I'm describing it. But. OK. Um, what I like to do is I like to cover stuff up with my finger to see what it looks like if I take it away. And I see, so I'm going to kick this off, and I'm going to get rid of this. Where layers over over intersect with each other, like here, the disc intersects with the the um, this handle. You make it a nice dark um, transition to from the from whatever's overhanging it. Same with this, that's why I did that. Make that super dark, and now I can get into the styling a little bit more. Okay, let's round off some corners. This is my main theme. I guess I would call this the spine. Um, and so let's just, it's not very pretty, but it's just a sketch, so it's fine for now. And I want to erase this and make my finger hole in, in, um, embedded, in, indented a little bit. I can shade all that in. I'm going to put a shadow in here. I'm going to start shading all of this side here. I don't know exactly where my light source is, but maybe it doesn't matter. And all of this. And as I go back, I'm, I'm lightening it up. You really want that focus next. Uh, of the, you really want that focus of the stuff nearest you. So let's see what else. I'm going to put a core in here. At least it's easy to make cores with these things. Um, what else? I'm going to put, hold on. Just winging it as I go. Uh, okay, and here needs to be a hard line because this is metal up here. Okay, let's just put in some more joining the lines, just some more cores and core in here. Uh, and some shading. I don't know exactly what's going on, but just fade that up. So I guess my light's over here somewhere. Hey, look at this. It's already getting messy. See my finger 
prints all along here. And the fingers aren't even that dirty. Oh, my underhand is getting dirty. You can see that blue stuff. All right, so anyway, if this is in a, this looks like it's in a realistic setting. A dude could even be holding this. I, I don't want to draw a hand. I might screw it up. But what I'm going to say is I'm not going to do that simple shift of a shadow. I will, actually, I will do that. But I'm going to shift it way down. So the perspective is going this way. And so I'm just going to basically copy really light the shapes comes here I got a I got this handle keep that in perspective so this is all shadow so let me just highlight that Okay, and then so you might see a little bit more, you might see a little bit on this perspective, with that perspective, right? Because the shadows are also in perspective. In a way, that was a mistake. Okay, so I'm gonna shave all that in. Personally, make a nice fence around the shadow. So I know where to shade. And so I'm gonna start darkest here. And as I go away, I'll lighten it up. In fact, I'll go a little bit further. I'll go all the way. All right. Um, Okay, let's start getting in a little bit more detail on the other side of the grip. It's darker because uh, they cast shadows. And let me put um, a, a, what's it called, a contour curve in here. So I'll start off with an ellipse, and then I'm going to show that it goes over, around, over, around, and over. So they're like kind of uh, embossed type things. Put in some details in here. And make sure that's a nice dark shadow. All since my light's coming from here, all the my this is gonna be a little bit lighter. But I'm now gonna go over this side because this is on an angle where it would be darker. I'm going to go all darker in here. I'm going to tidy that up. Down here is going to be super dark. It's going to be a little bit darker. And here's going to be a fair amount darker. Uh, so. so I feel like I need to have doesn't match up somehow, so I'm just gonna. Now the handle looks more realistic. Um, in terms of, I meant this handle, this, uh, I don't even know if you call it a handle, but now I've, I've, because now I've made this head bigger by just adding these parts, because it just looked off. But now that I did that, I kind of saved it. Because now that the, the um, this this handle whatever looks a little bit more realistic, a battery pack, and this one I'm gonna stick with my lighting source and my style. I don't always do this, but since I started it, I might as well remain consistent and just do a box in here and. Let's see, but okay, let me put in some contour lines because I see. So, this is some contour line, it goes straight, and it goes down, then it goes a little bit down here, and then this goes 90 degrees, and then it goes straight down here. That's a contour line, and I'm going to do the that's a contour line right there. Just tidy up some of these lines just around the edges. 
Um, I'm going to put some white paint in there, so I'm not worried about that. Just a little extra shading. A little bit of shading in here, but not much, very light. Okay. I would love to get rid of all of this. So I'm going to. Now, I forgot how this works because I don't use pencils much, but I'm going to use the white out. That's such a big piece, though. Actually, you know what? This is not going to work. You don't want to white out that. And I don't think white out works very well with this whole situation. It works well with ballpoint pen, but I'm going to do something else. I'm going to use a Sharpie. Um, isn't it pencil? Is it possible to erase it even on the marker paper? Or No, no I'll show you. Show you. Where is that? Eraser. All right, I'm gonna use a brand new eraser. I can't find the eraser. So, but I'm gonna show you, it just smudges, it just smears. Because whatever this lead is inside these pencils, it's very plastic, basically it's plastic. But let's try- It's like waxy. It's like waxy, totally. So let's yeah. just try a little experiment. So, let's just, let's just say I make it crazy. No, okay, let's just try. Huh, what do you know? It's working, it's probably because it's a new eraser. Well, let's get in there, let's see it. Let's see if I can erase this. Oh my goodness. Well, maybe this eraser is super duper. I just did some Prismacolor sketches before and I had another eraser and it worked terribly. But this is working quite okay. Whew, thank you. Who said that, Stephanie or who, Katarina, who said that? Yeah, that was Cat. Cat, all right. Well, hey, Cat, save the sketch a little bit. Well, now. Hooray. I've got, hey, well, okay. You know what? Now I've got. I can see without those massive errors. I can see a side view. Kind of looks like an, a cat with an arched back. So, okay, it's just my. I'm just going to try to do a sketch of this in the side view, and this is exactly how you guys should also do. It's just these happy accidents. So I've got this big grip, right? And then I've got cuts down. And then here's the top. And then I've got a battery pack here. Just gonna do loosey goosey for now. There, comes down and goes down, down here. Uh, when I've got the handle, the circle thing. So just bring these lines along. So just working your 3D or your side views alongside your, a, a, you know, two drawings alongside each other. It's just how you figure stuff out. Okay, and this is the enemy. And circle template for this, might as well do it. Okay, now notice how I'm gonna do the circle. I'm not just gonna do a uniform, a uniform line. I'm gonna start light up here, and as I go around, I'll go dark, and as I go back up, I'm coming, I'm making it uh, lighter. That just gives it that line weight. Um, and I'm gonna go one step smaller, two steps smaller, do that same again, to give it some extra, you know, things aren't just one line, they're multiple lines. So I'm going light up and down, at, at the bottom I'm going dark as you can see. So, and now here's the, where the hand fits around. And I'm gonna go dark at the bottom as I go around. Um, and I'll go one more inside that. So my, since you already have your circle template out, you might as well just bust them all in at the same time. So there we go, another one smaller, dark. Okay, so that's just basically 
kind of the side view of this. And battery pack, strong separation there. And so this is my total outline of this thing. Drive shaft, uh, disc. Unfortunately, this drawing is getting in the way, but it's fine. See my, you see my cat getting up there on next to the TV? Is on my one of my amplifiers. The amplifier is pretty hot, so he likes to lay on that. Okay, anyway. Um, yeah, I'll shade all that in. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Let me just get back. Oh, I was thinking this looks like a cat with an arch back. So let's just put in some other styling lines. It goes down here. So this might be a valid concept after an hour of sketching. Battery pack, we're not worried about that so much. Okay, and I'll shade in all of this area in here. Hey, um, guys, I'm sorry if I sound like a YouTube video. You just guys, just please, you know, if you want to spark up a conversation, I'm down and I can talk and sketch. So I just don't want you to be bored and be like, oh God. So if you want to talk about something, I'm here. Okay, so since I'm out of paper, I cannot go back and forth because I'll, I'll hit that paper. So I'll just, I'm just going to flick it. And as I get away from the light source, get darker. Same with here. As I go down, it gets darker. So I'm going to shade that, and this gets darker as well. Just layers, layers of pencil, and, and just layers. Uh, down here, I'll put a core, and I'll bring it up. And I forgot to put a switch, so I'm just going to put it in here. Color it in with orange. So maybe that's a good thing to put in orange pops. Um, OK, so just continuing on. I will shade this one in a little bit lighter. Meanwhile, I'll go over the whole lot. But each time I lay that pencil down, I'm going over everything. So therefore, it gets darker and darker. OK, just make this really dark in here. This is some handle grip. Um, start the shading process. So my light is coming from here. Shadow is going to come down here from that handle grip. And then I'm going to shade it, the whole thing. And as I go up, I make it lighter. Same here. Now I'm going to do the whole darn thing because there's also this in here. Just make this shadow definitely stronger. I've lost it when I co colored it in. Um, there's going to be definitely shadow here. And I guess a core in here. I guess a core in here. This is going to be darker because the light's completely opposite side. There's going to be a core here. A little bit shaded here. Okay, so this and this are basically um, the same design. So, you know, maybe I just do something like this for background. Just going to stick with my simple shapes. I mean, I already put a background in, but, you know, what's wrong with doing two? It's fine. So now that really pulls these two together, I hope. And just to reiterate, just to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two things. Either go this way or go this way. So I'm going to shade it up here. Let me do a quick shade session um, in, in, in this background. It might help me understand what I'm going to do next. Because honestly, I don't know what I'm going to do next. Uh, I just follow a system. 
I just do what I know needs to be done because of either mathematics like light or ergonomics or machinery. I just do what I need. To, I know I need to do. And then based off that, then I can figure out what my next step is. So, you know, in this case, this background, well, I know my light source is over here, so I know I got to shade that. So, but what I was trying to figure out is what am I going to do? Am I going to go really hard inside the background or am I going to go hard on the outside? And I still haven't decided yet. Hey, let's get the eraser out. Thank you. Thank you. That was a really nice tip. I mean, well, maybe it's just not only you saying, but I open a new eraser. All right. Um, so I don't know how I'm going to pop these things together. I want this and this to definitely look like they're together. And I guess the logical choice is to draw a line between them. So, I mean, here's the system that I'm, it's just, the purpose of this is to bring them together. So what's the easiest way is to just draw a line. So just do that. And through here, I'm going to just nice and systematically bring this up. So I know it's parallel and a line joining these two. Okay, well, it's starting to come together. Now I know I'm going to color in the inside. And I'm going to be careful about this particular area because I want the I want it to be white. So now I'm going to just shade this in a little bit more, just to really pop it off. And get rid of, and then, oh, actually I wanted that to go into here, so let me just continue this. And then of course a little bit over here. Remember to keep it lined up, otherwise it looks tacky. Okay. I'm gonna drop a shadow since my light is coming down this way. I'm gonna drop a shadow of this inside here, just only inside of the um, only inside of the, uh, the, the the background box. I'm gonna simply shade that in, not too hard. I don't want it to distract from the side view. It's just that extra added depth. Okay. Maybe that box should come down here. Hold on, I'm just thinking, now I'm, now I'm thinking too much about the background, but whatever, I'm not gonna mess with it. Uh, let's put in some like cut lines because you know there's many, many cut lines and products where you have to mold the pieces and put them together. This is definitely a strong one because that is where the battery comes attached, detached. Um, let's put some grips. Let's say you have to uh, pinch something to release the battery. So I'm gonna put in some, some grips in here. So when you're drawing and designing this stuff, try to think about you as a user. And so how are you gonna get that battery off? Let's put a light up here to show that it's charged. And let's put a little orange in there just to show it's something different. Not that you can notice it. This needs some detail. Nobody's gonna have something that boring. So maybe there's a, first thing I need a switch underneath here, like here. So that's that color loading orange. Um, but this is way too boring. It needs some funk. So what could it be? It could be grip, it could be dial to dial up the power, dial down the power. How about let's just put a logo on there. Um, this is a grinder. Uh, sometimes the angle grinders have like a trigger and then like a, a safety switch that you can put in okay, to like okay. turn it on or turn it off. Safety, yes ma'am, yes ma'am. So, okay, that's gonna be interesting. Thank you for that. I'm gonna make it, some of these construction workers have really big hands. So I'm gonna increase the size of this because I'm pretending a dude who's using this, uh, that perspective is that off. I'm gonna pretend he's got really big fingers, which would not be too far out of the realms of reality. 
And so I'm going to make it, so he, he has a really big thumb area for his big thumb. That looks off. Let me just see. Okay, anyway, whatever. I'll shade this in a little bit darker because the shadow side is going to be on that side. And here's a safety switch. And I'm not going to be innovative on this. I'm just going to let it be what it is. It's just a switch. Definitely shadow in here because the switch is recessed. Shadow on this side. So that's a switch. Um, that's a safety switch. Um, let's put that in red, uh, orange in this case. Just that. And I'll put in some arrows like um, safe, safe, wait, safe. What's opposite of safe? Dangerous. S, <laughs> dangerous. Let's say safe and dangerous. Nobody's going to know what D is. Okay, basically what I'm doing. And so the, the angle grinder is like that. I'm using it, so I want to be able to read it. So I'm going to put the letters in, let's just say S for safe or slow, and then F for fast. Okay, I, I know it's a safety thing, but let's just do that. So that's how the guy with big hands, he's using it, and he's going to look down, and he's going to see the S and the F. So that's why I put it like that instead of facing me. Um, let's put in some bolts. This is this is all plastic right here. This is um, metal. So let's put in some pretty hardcore bolts. It always looks tough, which these things need to look. And the bolts go in this way. It's the same perspective as the handle. Bolts go in the same way. So I have to keep them all in the right perspective. They might stick out a little bit. There's that one. And now I have to do the same on the other side. So I'll put in this one, put in this one, put in this one. And then the bolts I purposely made are sticking out. And so that bolt is gonna be here. This bolt is gonna be in perspective here. Uh, okay, so I need to get darker under here. I see that, just to give it some more punch. So I'm gonna just shade that in. And underneath is gonna be shadow, underneath the shadow. But there is this recess. Okay. Oh, I see something. Now it looks like I've got a shadow going in here, which I will make it a shadow because it's going to be, let me do a contour line, new contour line is across, down, across, across. So that's the contour lines there. I'm not worrying about that side. In fact, I'm going to erase because if my light source is here, well, speaking of that, let me erase this because what I'm going to do is something pretty cool. Leave it blank. Um, it's going to reflect the light. So, okay, I'm going to reinforce the fact that the light is, but I'm going to go, I will have the exterior shape because I need to know where to shade, but I'm not going to go all around it hard. I'm just going to keep it. I've got a little. I've got a little bit of um, um, perspective issues going on, but I'm not really worried about it. Now, my shading for this light source is going up diagonally. I'm going to keep consistent with that. Shade that darkest here because my light source is on the other side. When I get to that threshold, I can go all the way across. And start again here. Not too dark. Now I can just go all the way across, single lines. So that's my other light source, but I'm purposely not gonna shade this area in. I will go over the bolts, but I want that light to look like it's reflecting. 
This looks empty. If you see empty spaces, fill them in with something. And there's got to be some, oh, let's put in a contour line here. I already have an old one. I guess I'll stick with it. And then it goes down, it goes under, and then it goes under here. That's that contour line. This side's all whacked up. <laughs> By the way, that's not a technical term you should use. Um, so let's just get this going a little bit here so there's a little more contrast. Oh, and of course, I'm gonna have to shade this up. I can't wait to get onto the white paint. Notice how I'm, I'm rotating my paper as I go around because I want my shading lines to kind of work with the, 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 the shape of that cone, cylindrical cone. There, and then in here, there's gonna be some bolts like I did here. So that's what that is. I'll worry about that later. All right, basically, I don't, I wish I didn't do that one because this would be a good page. Um, next is paint. What's the time? 2.17, so bear with me for one second. All right, 2.30. I'm going to, wait, 3.30 is when our class ends. I have to think about like timing. 3.30. All right, I'm gonna do a quick, quick maneuver. I'm gonna get out my white paint. I'm gonna, get, gotta, I'm gonna get some tools. I'm gonna get a plate and um, a little shot glass of um, whiskey. I'm joking, shot glass of water. Plate, shot of whiskey. Okay, um, and I need my paint. Here's my paint. Now this is gouache, Windsor Newton, cheap gouache. I don't know. This thing has lasted me ten years, and and it's getting old, but it still works. And find a paintbrush. So I'm going to put this all in the camera view. I hope I can get it all in so you can see what I'm doing. Just make sure we're recording. There's, oh, okay, okay, okay. I see this. I'm just going to stop. And okay, good. We're recording. I'm going to reshare. Hey, let's just have a quick break. Just a quick one. I'm just going to go for a quick bathroom break and then I'm going to get onto this paint. And I'm also going to refill my coffee. So bear with me just for five minutes. Let's have a little break for five minutes and then um, I'll be right back. Okay. One sec.
I'm going to put on this white paint and it's going to give me enough time to prepare this, um, these sketches for a sketch page or two. Um, I'll do that in Photoshop, but we can also do it manually with pencil. I mean, with, um, glue and, uh, scissors, but in the meantime, I'll get to that in a sec. So right now, I'm moving over. I know I know you can't see my drawing well, but I want to show you my paint situation. I've got my shotted whiskey right here. It's important to get the best whiskey that's possible and use this because it really smear, smears nice. <laughs> okay, I'm joking. This is just plain water, tap water in here. I like a little glass because, um, so I'm dipping my paintbrush in. It's a very, very thin, small paintbrush. Can you share your screen? Oh, let me turn my music off. I'm sorry, I kept it on. Sorry, Sydney, what did you say? Um, you're not sharing your screen. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna share, share my visualizer. Okay, there we go. So, there we go. I know you can't see totally my, I'm, I'm using, anyway, this is how I'm doing the paint. A uh, glass of water, and I dipped my paintbrush in there, get it kind of wet, and smear it around in the paint. Very thin paintbrush. And so, smearing it around, I want a pretty good coat, so don't water down that gouache too much because the cup becomes very transparent. By the way, gouache is basically watercolor, but uh, kind of condensed watercolor. So they're basically the same. Um, so I've smeared, uh, I've got some paint on my paintbrush, but I want a, sh I want a sharp edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and twist the paintbrush and drag it away. And, and as I twist it, it's twisting the bristles, and making it sharp. So now I have a really sharp point. So I'll move that out of the way, get it in the camera. Uh, Look how dirty my hand is. This is a no-no. I have a really crappy pair of jeans on. Thank goodness you can't see below the desk because I've got my crappy jeans on. I'm just gonna rub this off because it's gonna mess the drawing up with dirty hands. In fact, I'm gonna get a little bit of water on there and just clean my hands off a little bit. Use those jeans. Okay. So I'm clean again, more or less. Uh, so paint, light's coming from this way. So I'm going to put in the highlights. I'm going to start here because I plan ahead from years of experience. If I start doing all my highlights over here, and then I need to do highlights here, the wet paint, I'm going to smear the wet, wet paint. So I start with the light area first, which is over here. And um, so, start putting in some highlights. I'm going to put in one right in here. You can barely see it. Or you can see it there, okay. Um, get some more paint. There's going to be a highlight right in here, a pretty bright one. So I'm just going to, you know, I, I use a paintbrush like a pen. And what I mean by that is I go diagonal. I need some more paint water on there. And I, I do my same type of, that was too much. I do my, there. It's kind of a little bit diagonals, let that dry. Um, so I'm going to go around here. I'll do a highlight up here. 
Um, I'll do, actually, I am going to go in here. I'm going to go really bright in here. Right in here, because that's this extreme light reflection. In fact, this whole part would be shit covered in white, but let's just leave it because I might overdo it. You can see my paint, uh, my paper's wrinkling. Uh, more highlights. Okay, this is gonna go down. I want to really accent the fact that there is a line in here. And this part's gonna be all probably white. I don't recommend doing big solid pieces of white like this. I recommend this paintbrush to be used more for lines like this covers up some of your contours, covers up some of your there. There might be a highlight. I don't know. I'm not going to do that. Could mess it up. Um, okay, let's keep on doing some highlights. There's going to be a highlight on the switch. Now, something bad about these pencils is the wax more or less, and paint does not adhere to it very easily. And it'll smear easy, you just gotta let it dry. But anyway, I'm gonna put in another highlight up here. Rotate your paper, trying to avoid touching the paint. There's some highlight there. I hope it dries without getting all um, uh, wrinkly because that would suck. Um, highlights. Okay, I'm gonna start putting in some highlights because I don't wanna put white pencil on here. I could do white pencil, but white pencil on this uh, blue pencil is not gonna work. So I'm just gonna to have to use the white paint and I'm gonna put a highlight around this leading edge. I've got some little indentions here, which I'm gonna pop those off. Um, this one, you, you can actually see this highlight in here because there's a shadow. Okay, anyway, let's just keep going with the paint. This is gonna be a top surface, so it's gonna, I'm just gonna brush it on. Make sure they're all up ni nicely working around the ellipse. Um, there's gonna be a highlight going in here. There's gonna be a highlight going in here. And these highlights also act kind of like contour lines as well. They help define your shape. And so this one too. A little bit more on there. Because it's very transparent. Um, there's going to be a highlight around here. And also white paint helps cover up a lot of these construction lines. I'll fill in that whole corner. Because that's going to be a bright corner. Just go around here and it helps cover up some of the shading, some of my lines. Um, so this paint is old, so it looks yellow. It's not really white. It should be brilliant white, but it's not because it's old. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, let's put in a highlight just in here. Highlight in here. And I think it's more or less done. I didn't even shade all this. You know what? I need to shade that. Because this is the grinder and it's important part of it. Even though I'm not really designing that part, it is important. So I'm gonna just go in there deeper and add. This is what makes it recognizable as a, as a as a grinder, so there. Um, so there's going to be a shadow cast on this grinder piece. So I'm just going to fake it. Uh, 
I'm going to shade that in the darkest here. So I work with paint and with drawing at the same time because as you put in highlights, you realize where you need more shadows and that kind of stuff. So that's a shadow of the body on top of the um, disc. And the disc is a little bit, it's, going to be, it's a little bit kind of UFO shaped, saucer shaped. So I'll make it dark here. And as I go around, be careful not to hit your paint because it's still drying. So there's that. It's the disc part. Can do extra probably detail in there. I don't know. Probably got some levels in there. Probably another disc in there. I don't even know, to be honest. Okay, that's the. And I won't be able to see the other part of the disc, so that's fine. Just beef this up a little bit. Um, so that's. I think this is. I, I did the highlights on here. I think it's okay. I'll put some a little bit on the bolts, each bolt, just a little pop. And just beef up a few of those other highlights. It's all white. So that one's more or less done, I think. Let's see if I need some highlights on here. Yes, I do. Right in here. Right around here. Um, also, is this dry? You can tell if it's dry by shining it into the light at an angle and you see if it's dry or not. Okay, so most of it's dry. There's some pretty wet stuff here, but I'll try to be careful. So here, here. And you know what, I'm gonna do a highlight and I'm gonna just paint it in kind of like I would have sketched it in. Can't even see it. Let's see if I can put it a little bit more. Got a lot of paint on here right now, so I might as well use it. And let's just see if I can bring that around in here. And here, there's going to be a hard one. Um, what else? It's going to be a strong one right in here. So it's going to be, I'm going to get rid of all of that and then just erase that with white gouache. It's very transparent, so, but I just want that look where the white blends into the, into the, into the actual drawing. A little highlight there. We'll highlight there, and I think we're good. I'm not gonna mess with this one, this one's not great. So, I let that dry for a sec. But so, while I'm at it, I let that, I set that to the side. Here's another sketch, the first one I did, and I'm gonna bust in some highlights in here too. And this one's so sketchy that it's gonna take ages to dry. Um, a little bit in here. I didn't use a circle guide on this, so I can be super sketchy on this. It's going to be highlight in here. Let me just add a little bit more. Uh, I guess it will be highlight. I guess it will be highlights underneath these vents. But I'm really not caring so much about this one. I guess there's gonna be a highlight going through this. Because that's where the battery attaches and having said that, I'm better make that a super hard line. And I'll put in some, 
I can you can save these crappy sketches sometimes. You can sometimes save them by just adding a few extra bits and pieces. So I'm gonna put this finger grip stuff. So it's gonna be a hole to, or an indention to be able to pull this thing out. So these are just like ribs to grip. And it's an indention, so there's gonna be a shadow right in there like that. And here's going to be harder for just get that a little bit. You know, so maybe I can like finish. Uh, maybe I can bring this to life while I wait for the other one to dry. There's going to be a core in here. But I have to be careful because there's wet paint in there. Also here, another core here, and here's my uh, whatever it is, the disc. Um, Okay, so I've got this shape here. So there's going to be a highlight in there. Let's just put that in. Working the two at the same time, highlights and shadows. Okay, I'm good. I just need this stuff to dry. You can do cheats to dry it by putting like either toilet paper or, or tissue paper or um, paper towel, but it tends to mess up your drawing somehow. While I wait for this to dry, let me show you a cool little trick. Now, I don't know if any of you know what this stuff is, but what this is is you buy this from a body shop, and, and if you have a rust spot, you stick this behind the rust spot and fill it up with plaster. Basically, you know, it's, it fills up like a hole inside your body. And there's a lot of this textury stuff around. And what it does, what you can do with it, you can add texture. So since I don't care too much about this drawing, I'm gonna add texture to this handle or grip or for, so I'm gonna find, I'm just gonna lay this on top of the, this wire mesh. And I'm gonna use a pencil, the, the, the edge of the pencil I'm going to start shading it in and it'll give me a texture. Light texture first and now I'm going to go into the shadows. And texture is a piece for eyes so you know this is kind of not that this is the best but it, it, it helps. And let's say I want some texture in the, the wheel, I mean the, the, the handle thing. So let's just do that one too. So if you can find any textures that you can rub on, then, um, you know, it can really beef up your drawing. I don't know if you can see that in the kind of, I'll do the same with this one. This one should be dry now. And I want texture in the where the hand is going to be. I want texture in this part. This is an old school technique that's used for car interiors back way back in the 80s. I wasn't at school in the 80s, it's way too old, but, um, and also 90s actually, and they're still not using computers. So it's good for like uh, furniture. It's very good for furniture, fabric, textiles, and things like that. All right, so my drawings are done, more or less, and I'm gonna now scan them into my computer and present them in page formats. So. I'm gonna stop my sharing and I'm gonna share my desktop instead so you can see the whole process. Okay. Hey, by the way, if you guys send me a chat, I'm not looking, I can't see it. So I apologize, but I can't look at two things at the same time.
All right, so I'll put it in the scanner, make sure it's all, I don't want to remove my scanner, make sure it's all dry, it's all dry, stick it in. So this is another reason why I don't use marker paper mm -hmm. because you can never find the right size for a, a, a standard scanner. This is nine by ten, nine by twelve. My scanner doesn't do that. My scanner does maximum legal size. No, it doesn't even do legal. Basically, it does letter size. Uh, okay, you see my desktop. Sorry about the messy keyboard. I can't keep it clean no matter what. in Photoshop and so my paper doesn't fit in which is unfortunate which is annoying that's why I always stick with letter size paper I don't think you're screen sharing right now bro. oh no okay I screen share sorry my bad Desktop. Yep, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna go into import import the scanner. It'll it'll do it. So you see it's cut off my paper, which is just really annoying, but I have to readjust it. I see what I need to do. I just need to readjust it a little bit. Can't get that end right there. I just want that end. One second. So I'm cutting off this battery pack on this, which is kind of important. But so there, I'm just ah, I missed the handle. One more attempt, I just need to shift it up. One more attempt. So that's why I don't use this stuff. Miss the handle again, whatever. I'm just gonna go with it. Um, I'm gonna scan that whole thing. And then I'll scan this, this, this other one. But in a big, really big studio, they have huge uh, A3 scanners and things like that. So, but I, they're like two grand and I'm not buying one. I'm just, I'm good with the paper that I use. There's that, and I'll scan this other one. That's cool. I just scan the whole thing. I 
I forgot my annotations, but I'll do it in Photoshop. Okay, I've got my two things scanned in. And next move, before I start adjusting all the colors and everything, I'm going to make a new document, letter size. New. Three hundred DPI landscape. Oh, I need to be clear. Sorry, letter three hundred landscape. <coughs> what the heck? I don't know what that is. I'm gonna escape out of that. What is that? Honestly, what is that? Uh, honestly, I don't even know what this is, and I don't have any dialog windows on any windows, so I might have pressed the wrong button. It says camera roll. Oh, wait, there. Cancel. There it is. It's hidden. Let's go back. Let's go back to my images there. Control A, select all, control copy, and let's plant it in here. Control, control V, uh, paste, control T is transform. And let's move it off to the side, hit enter. And then I'm gonna grab the other one. Control A, Control Copy, Control V, and Control T. And get that sized up. I like to do, before I do all the levels, I like to put them onto the presentation board first because that way I can get all the levels the same. Okay, so this first one. This top one, um, control L, or if you need it, um, image adjustments levels. I know there's shortcuts, but I don't like to do the shortcut because it doesn't work too well. I'll start off with this, this one, the black one. Pull it over to the edge and kind of hit the, hit the edge of this white little thing above here. You see that little white thing, and then this one I'm going to start really whacking over to get rid of all of the white and smudges and stuff. So that looks okay to me. Now I've got that one done. Now I'm gonna to go to this one. Might as well put it on top. Same with this, control L, which is levels. Just scoot this over till it just about hits the white. And then the right side, the white side, you jack that up so it's you know, so you get rid of all of those smudges. Okay. Now we have to do a little eraser job because there's some lines around my paper. So I'm just gonna go here and just <clears throat> Okay, that's cool. Move that out of the way. So I'm gonna turn it on multiply over here. Let's just bring this closer to me because I'm gonna have to get right text on here because I forgot to write the text, so I'll write the text in Photoshop. Um, so there's that one. Now I'm going to grab this one. And I'm going to erase out all of the paper lines. Um, so ease for eraser. And unfortunately, this is cut off, but we'll, I can't do anything about it. Get rid of those little uglies. So Control T, transform that. And I'm going to get rid of all of that stuff because that's just really not nice. And which one is that one? That's that one. Delete. Okay. That one's set up. And now uh, we'll set this one up. Control T, transform it, and just make it like a really big. Since I've already cut the bottom off, I might as well use it as maximum as I can. Okay, so that's basically okay. Move it over a little bit just so there's some. There we go. 
So you know what would happen? You'd probably turn in homework like this, and I'd go, bro, you, you cut off the bottom. And I'd probably give you some, some stick for that. <laughs> so just remind me, Brooke, you did that also. But actually that's no excuse because I have a limited time. I've only got another 30 minutes with you. So um, if I had more time, I would actually really take more care, but I don't. So there's my sketch page. It's just of ideas. And now I'm gonna go next step and new layer. And I'm gonna put in some text. This is ugly, I just saw that. I'm gonna erase that out. That's about the care and stuff you put in your drawing. So eraser, but this time I'm gonna go uh, airbrush. And we'll just go down there and just, oh, it's long, long layer. Just erase all that out because that's why I get paid a good amount of money for my stuff and get hired by, you know, big dogs because all this stuff I care about. Okay, there we go. And this stuff. But I'm still being kind of quick about it. It's just, it's just, I don't, all this is gone. Bye bye. Okay. Uh, my blatant mistakes like this, that's off. That's bye bye. And everything looks basically kind of okay ish. Whoops, that's wrong there. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go into my layer and I'm going to choose a brush. It's suitable, and I'm gonna to try to trick the viewer into thinking it's not Photoshop. I'm gonna to try to trick the viewer into thinking that this is actually all done with paper. And how I do that is instead of using a brush to do your, to do your writing, here, I'll back to my back. Uh, okay, standard brush, there's the brushes, oh, right here, brush. And instead of using an air, instead of using this, no, uh, Okay, I can use that, but I use this thing. It's normally on Dissolve, and look what happens when you do it in Dissolve. It's very digital. By the way, I'm gonna eyedropper. I'm gonna eyedropper of this color. That's perfect color, so it all matches. Um, back to beef and brush, and now it's the same color, basically, as the rest of my drawing but I don't want it to be that digital look, I want it to be dissolved. And dissolve gives it this kind of modeled effect. You know, like this. And it's not perfect, but nobody's gonna be able to tell. So let me undo. So now I can start adding, and I would do this with pencil normally, but I've already scanned it, and it's a pain in the neck to scan this paper, so I'm not gonna do that again. Um, so I'm gonna fill this up by going like, Let me just redo that. Um, battery pack. Let's just light this up a little because it's not it's a little light. Have some nice writing. Let's get this a little more better position. Are you using just a soft brush or like a pencil brush? Uh, I'm using a, a brush brush. Not a, I don't use the pencil. I never use the pencil, but maybe it's a good idea, but I never use it. Where's the pencil? It's in here, it's in the brush. Uh, God, where's the, oh, is it here? I, I don't remember, I never use pencil. Oh no, like, you know, you can like download different like textured brushes. Yes, uh, I do that sometimes, but not, not for this because this works for me. But I definitely download brushes for sure. I definitely do that. But not not here. Um, okay, rubber grip. Okay, what I like to do is I like to do all my text first, and then I start putting in all my lines uh, and stuff. You'll see what I'm talking about. I like to do things. If I'm doing a repetitive thing, I like to do it all at once. So. I'm doing a repetitive thing of writing all my text. So, got 
unpack. Um, um, what's this? This is rubber grip. Rubber. Don't worry, I'll fix. I'll, I know you can't read it, but I'll fix it. Rubber grip with texture. Um, of course, this battery pack, but I'm. I'll just put it in because I want as many words as I can. And I'm going to fake something. I'm going to say 240 volt. I honestly don't have a clue, but it looks like I'm very smart. This one's going to be a 240 volt. I would do my research first before I actually commit and send it. But it's nice to put in all of this nerdy stuff because basically we're kind of nerds. Um, okay, I'm going to do some sort of separation thing. I'm going to, I'm going to, I would do this with, I would normally do this with, oh, you know what, I can do it here. Okay, you'll see what I'm, you'll see what I'm going to sketch this in. And then it goes over here, kind of like, and so. This is the battery area. This is a uh, deselect battery. This, this is all plastic, so I'm going to say plastic. Line it up with that. Plastic plus rubber. And then this, is, this area is metal. Don't worry, I will fix this. Um, you can't read stuff like that's overlaid like that, but, um, and I'm just going to say this is all metal, metal casing, because I didn't, I, I would normally like separate it, but I forgot to, um, and I'd make this first part metal and this part plastic, but I didn't do it. So, you know, you can just kind of bullshit your way through it. You know, if you make a mistake, well, lie. Um, metal casing, but sometimes you're actually more innovative. Metal casing, metal housing, sounds better. Metal housing. Um, okay. Um, rubber. rubber grip. Um, switch. Um, this obviously handle, but I'm going to write it anyway because maybe somebody doesn't know it's a side view. Uh, so what's that called? Um, auxiliary handle. I'm sure there's a technical name, and I would look it up. Auxiliary. Um, um, Auxiliary handle. Um, I'll, I'll use the same thing again. I know this part's a little bit boring, but um, I think it's important. Release, battery release. Safety switch here. Metal. Metal casing to sound a little bit better. Okay. Let's just zoom out, see what it's looking like. Okay, it's looking kind of okay. I'm going to make a new layer. Did I just draw it? I did. Whatever. New layer. Um, we'll just do circles. 
because it remains consistent. Oops, that one doesn't look good. Okay, so there's some ir illegible stuff in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer and fill it up with white. So B for brush, I'm gonna go big, I'm gonna go white. And I'm just gonna put in just wherever I need it. Oh, I knew I drew on one of the layers. Uh, this one, oh, yep, I, I knew I drew. Okay, well, anyway, those are going to have to, actually, I'm going to cheat. Um, okay, there, and I'm going to turn this down, this layer down, so you can see a little bit of transparency, not that much. There, yeah, just a little bit, a little bit. You can see, okay, in this area here, you can see how I'm, like, this is zero opacity. This is full opacity. So somewhere in between, so you can kind of see through a little bit. Um, so now I can read stuff. Back to brush, back to this thing, because I forgot to do a circle around that. So a little bit of attention to detail. Next, I'm gonna do a new layer, but you don't have to do this with all new layers. Metal housing, that's all, so I just do all that. Battery pack, that's obvious, battery release. So I'm gonna do something all the same. I'm gonna do a squig like, like that, and I'm gonna make them all the same. So, because I get in that muscle memory, and I just like that consistency. Uh, auxiliary handle. You don't see that, but it's cool. You don't need to see everything, rubber grip. Switch, safety switch. Metal casing. Metal grip. Two forty volt. Okay, and there's one other thing I'm gonna do. Since I have some orange pop. I'm going to pop it in my um, in in my things. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. We, I'm going to select the eyedropper and select that color, and I'm going to just put a little blast. Oh, sorry, I'm broken. A little blast at the end. Oh, come on! Why is it not working correctly? Oh, it's only on some percent of the I wonder. So let's beat that up there. Just you know, to make it look industrial. And a little bit finished at the end of each of my little squiggles. Oh, I forgot to do one there. And I'm going to reverse that B. Uh, I'm going to select this color and I forgot to put a little bit right here. Okay, one more time. I'm going to reduce the power of this. Back to that color, I drop it. Okay. Um, just a few little finishers. I will just fill up these white spaces with some simple sketch lines. 
I rotate my paper. Okay, that, that's a little finisher. And then down here, I don't really need it, but I'll do it anyway. I rotate my paper. But I, I will use these borders to stop at my little annotations. And maybe I'll do it up here as well, actually. I'm good. Okay, here's my sketch page. Um, and that basically does it. Um, so I guess I merge it all together. So, okay, here's, here's my two sketch pages, right here, right here, and right here. I have them right here, I'm kind of pointing them out. I'm gonna merge one down onto the other because I might, oh, make, I made a mistake. I'm gonna merge this one down, and you might be able to tweak it one final step. So one's on top of the other, but then if you go to multiply, it 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 definitely beats it. So this is normal. I'm gonna mul darken, multiply. That really pops off the contrast, but it's a little too much. But I think I'm gonna still do it. And I don't want to mess with the others. I'm gonna to go to multiply. And it's a little too much, so I'm just going to reduce it a little bit. But at least it increased the contrast. And I guess that's done. So if I save as, I'll save it as a PDF. No, I'll save it as a JPEG. CSS fall, product, PD sketches. Uh, this is called Grinder. Grinder PSD. I'll save it as a JPEG. I don't care about it, so I don't. I would save it as a P, uh, Photoshop file if it was something important. But save. All right. There we go. There. That's it finished, and then I would load it into a PDF document, and. Um, do my other sketches. So now look, this is something I'm gonna stop sharing. So mm -hmm. that page, yes, it took me three hours. But it's because you know I went through basically the whole process of, of um, creating a quite a good sketch page. But you can also you might spend three hours on a drawing to create something like that. Okay, but then you can fill up a bunch of so that's one page. You could have probably made two pages out of that to be honest. But, um, so let's say you made two pages out of that, you still got five left, and you spent three hours on that. Well, your other pages can be very, very simple. You, can, you know how easy it is to do little thumbnails, like two inch thumbnails. You can fill a page up super easy, probably within an hour, easily. Um, that's another page, and so you can, you could have even, we could have even broken this into three pages. Okay, firstly, this concept had nothing to do with anything. It was in my first drawing. This is a piece of crap, and I would maybe cut this out, maybe put it onto another page. You know, so there's multiple ways to, to skin the, this cat and, um, and still get your homework in and still have good quality. So let's say, all right, these two pieces of, these, okay, this, this one right here, let me just get a pointer. These two definitely go together. That's without a doubt, and you can easily just move things around um, and get this onto one page easily. So that's one page. This is another page. So that's two pages of kind of loose sketches. Okay, an hour and a half each page so far. And then you know you can bust out little thumbnails. I didn't even get out the Sharpie um, or the ballpoint pen, which I'm way quicker with. And um, you know fill up pages with thumbnails and just, you know, um, bulk up your homework with multiple pages. So it's just like try to think about things, um, try to make them, if you want to max out your grade as much as possible, instead of having three thumbnails on an empty page, it's empty more or less, you have three, they look like crap, take those things, blow them up, arrange them so they look fit on a paper, maybe you go over it again. Um, no, so there's little tricks, tricks, and tr tricks of the thing. 
Does anyone have any questions or any comments or anything? I've got a question. Um, yeah. So you did Prismacolor this time around. Would you recommend like mixing um, different mediums and everything? So like doing Prismacolor for shading and then pen for line work on the same drawing or is that a no-go? I would say we'd have to, I'd have to see it first. I was about to whack on some Sharpie on this. Um, you know, it really depends on <clears throat> if you can pull it off. I mean, I'm sure, actually, people do marker, don't they? They, they put marker on, and they put colored pencil on top, which is very common. I could have done that myself, but I, I didn't think about it. Um, yeah, so, yeah, Sydney, mix them up. You might want to try a little experiment before you perhaps destroy a drawing. You know, maybe just do a little thumbnail of, uh, you know, trying some pencil and then some Sharpie on top or... But I, I can't say because it really depends on what tools you like and what you're comfortable with. I, I would say there's no such thing as a no-go. I mean, there's even points where, you know, I get to the point where I, um, I pull out some ink. I've got some ink here. This is just simple Indian ink, waterproof Indian, Indian India ink. And, you know, sometimes just to spice it up, if it's suitable for that splatter effect and if it's suitable, then I'll pull that out. I'll get a toothbrush in there, stick it in, splatter it, and, um, and see what happens. So I'm very experimental. Uh, you know, I'll try all different papers. I've got some old faded paper that was sitting in a windowsill for ages, but it's still in perfect condition. So it had all these crazy, it was blue paper, then it, part of it turned into pink. I'll use that old crappy paper and draw on top of it. I, I can get definitely experimental and and it's just fun, but I don't want you to waste your time. If you want to stick to what is true and tested, you know, that's fine, but it's also fun to get like experimental. For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions for homework or how I did this or materials? Okay, well anyway, homework, seven pages. Try to stick with one subject. Um, if you deviate a little bit, I'm not going to be mad. You know, some people, um, but definitely move away from some of the stuff you did before. So who was it that likes the football, uh, the soccer shoes? I think that's my fashion accessories. Um, this one dude is drawing football shoes, soccer shoes all the time. So I need to tell him to stop that. But anyway, yeah, just, just um, bust out some nice sketches for me, please. All right, 3.15. If, any, if nobody has any questions or anything, I don't really have much to add. I will post all this up tonight or tomorrow. Do you still want us to focus on ellipses within the sketches? Lucas, I don't remember exactly. Did, did I say you need to, or were your ellipses pretty good? Well, I mean, they were fine, but like just in general, what do you... Well, I do want you to master ellipses, but maybe... Um, I'm not going to be so strict about ellipse oriented designs right now anymore, unless you, um, unless you're bad at, unless you're poor at ellipses, if you're poor at ellipses, then really keep on going with ellipses. And if you're not comfortable very much, Lucas, with ellipses, do some more elliptical stuff, just really get those ellipses down. But I'm not strict about like focus on ellipses stuff now. Okay. If you want to do furniture, do whatever you want, but really the seven pages should be all along this, um, along the same lines, more or less. All right. Okay. I got a, I have a meeting a little later, so thank you all. And I will see you have a great weekend and I'll see you on Tuesday. You too. Thank you. Hey, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah.